I'm home! Digimon. fellow 90s kids and uh, non-90s kids, remember when we got introduced to Digimon? Well, buckle up, because today we're taking a trip down memory lane with something I just found buried in my basement. My old Digimon comics from the early 2000s. Short disclaimer right off the bat. As I live in Germany, I obviously got the German versions of these comics. But I know that they also were distributed in other countries, so I'm sure some of you had them too when you were younger. The publisher was called Dino, and their HQ was actually in Spain, which I only found out recently. As I was already a huge Digimon fan due to the anime airing in German free TV, my dad actually suggested to get me these comics, and so he did every single time they got published. Rest in peace, dad, and thank you. You were a big part of my happy childhood memories. Now if your own childhood memories come to mind right now, please let me know your stories about your favorite comics, games or toys in the comment section. Alright, enough with the intro. Let's talk about the comic art itself. First of all, the cover artwork always delivered, and to me, they always stood out from other magazines, as the Digimon comic covers never looked too overloaded and rather kept it simple and clean. Of course I didn't know that this was part of the reason why they stood out to me back then, but thinking about it now, it definitely makes sense. On top of that, Digimon just always had this special aura to it, and I'm sure you Digimon fans can relate. Now, if you were anything like me back then, this was peak art. I mean, just look at these illustrations. Uh, Taichi, what is that smirk while Sora walks right behind you? They were a mix of that classic anime style we all loved. And some, uh, creative liberties, shall we say? You can clearly see how much love the illustrators put into it, despite having to deal with tight deadlines. Some of these illustrations are especially detailed when you take a closer look at them. Take this Devimon for example. The abs, the belts and oh my god the crotch! <clears throat> these comics had everything. Over the top action poses, intense battle scenes. And let's not forget the dramatic digivolutions. Like when Leomon digivolved into Lady Devimon in Digimon Tamers. Um, wait, that actually didn't happen. Sure, with the sheer amount of art and dialogues these comics had, you can find a fair share of mistakes, but that just makes it all the more lovely in my opinion. I mean just think about it, somebody sat down and drew all of this in a matter of days and weeks. Plus, they were fully colored, so you really gotta give it to them. I was especially surprised to see how detailed some of these illustrations are. I mean, look! They even wrote an entire code on Koshiro's laptop. Now, I'm not an IT guy, but I tried to find out if this code actually makes sense by asking our good friend ChatGPT. And uh, this is what I got. The code you've shared appears to be written in a language that resembles a mix of basic and some pseudocode, but it doesn't fully adhere to the syntax or logic rules of any standard programming language. 
The code you've provided is ambiguous and non-standard, but I can make some educated guesses about its intended purpose based on common programming patterns. Possible objectives. One, user input validation. The loop involving the input ration one to two suggests that the program is asking the user for input and trying to ensure that S is either one or two. But hey, maybe some of you guys are into coding and might have an idea what this could mean. So uh, please let me know if you do. Now back to the comic art. I bet some of these expressions would become viral memes today, like Side Eye Mimi or Stone Sukamon, anyone? Or some might also remind you of already existing memes. Right? Gilmon? Steven? Okay, okay, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but come on, just look at this. Now, this section was always my favorite. The fan art and pen pal letters. This was like the social media of our childhoods. Who needed Instagram when you could send your masterpiece to the comic publisher and hope it would get printed? I literally spent hours just reading through all of the letters and Q&As. Now, for data protection purposes, I blurred all the last names, addresses, as well as email addresses. It's crazy though how some of these artists were super young and already created this insanely good art. Like, look at this Vimon. It was drawn by a 9 year old? The best I could draw at that age was, uh, oh no, I'm gonna regret this. This. But hey, let's take some time to show off some of the fan art and read a few of the fan letters. I mean, I spent days scanning each and every single one of these comics and I found some hidden gems. So I really gotta show you this, guys. Check out this fan art. I mean, you've got everything from adorable Digimon doodles to funny ones and especially romantic ones. We got the Digimon, the human characters. Uh, okay, good thing I censored that. But uh, we also got Digimon that looked like... Uh, Gatomon? Uh, let's pretend that didn't happen. Um, some kids also sent in their fantasy Digimon, as you can see here. This was super fun to look at, since I also loved drawing fantasy Digimon myself back then. What was really funny to me is how people were already heavily shipping several characters back then. Some would even get mad in their letters and ask why a certain character is not dating their favorite. And the pen pal letters? Pure gold. Dear Editor, I think Agumon is the best Digimon ever. Sincerely, a kid who definitely knows what's up. Or, Hi, my name is Kari. My Digimon Gatomon and me are looking for friends. My mailbox is starving. For some reason, that was the coolest thing to say back then, since everyone said that. Also, I found it at Digimon Fan Club, but you can only join if you don't like Taichi or Davis. These boys stink. Oh, and if you pay a monthly fee, every third letter was about founding a Digimon Fan Club, and oh boy, did some of them have tough requirements to be part of. Some fan clubs would even charge you membership money monthly. I guess these Digimon fans went on to later create Netflix, Spotify, Patreon and uh, other popular subscription services. Huh? But you know what? I wonder where these pen pal writers are today. Are they still Digimon fans? Did they ever meet their pen pals? Did someone join their scammy fan club? So many questions! Well, I couldn't just leave these questions unanswered, right? So, uh, I went ahead and tried to contact every single one that left their email address in the letters. Unfortunately, most of the emails I sent gave me automated replies saying that the mail couldn't be delivered or that the address doesn't exist. But one person actually responded to me! So, I asked them a bunch of questions, and uh, for that person's sake, I am keeping this anonymous though. Unfortunately, they never replied again after my second mail so after waiting for multiple weeks, I decided to make this video anyway. 
But let's go back and look at some of the more interesting artworks and letters. I am a true Pokemaniac. I heard that Digimon is a cheap copy until I watched the show myself. I really like it, especially the title theme. What a banger! Since I am 14 and it's not cool anymore to be a monster fan, other kids insult and pick on me. I don't get it. I admit, I like Pokemon better, but Digimon is very unique. Everyone's acting as if Pokemon and Digimon have to fight to decide which one is better. Can't they simply be equal? When all monster fans stick together, then we can oppose the people that judge us for our hobbies. Spitting facts. Preach it! Here's another kinda sad one. Hi, I'm Heiko. I'm looking for pen pals. I'm 12 years old and my hobbies are Digimon, Pokemon, Dragon Ball, music, Nintendo, TV, Karate and soccer. My mailbox is hungry, so please write to me. P.S. Unfortunately, I have the Tourette syndrome, a nerve-related condition. It would be great if a kid with the same condition would contact me. Of course, you can also contact me if you don't have it. I don't know about you guys, but reading that actually brought me to tears. And then, of course, the endless hard shipping fans. Will Taiji and Sora be a couple? Why is Matt in love with Sora? Why don't Takeru and Hikari marry? A Japanese online friend told me that they have feelings for one another, but she didn't want to tell me more. Will Hikari's daughter and Takeru's son marry? Also, they simply came up with names for them. Or rather, their Japanese online friend did. We don't know. Who is Izumi from Frontier in love with? I'm sure many guys and girls at that age were wondering about that, huh? Come on, guys. Who didn't have a crush on her back then? I mean, look at her. Isn't she beautiful? And then there's one more fan mail that received a reply, which I had to show you guys since it was too funny. Basically, this person called Tammy was quite unsatisfied with the quality of the comic. So they wrote... Sadly, I have to tell you that you are repeating your extras, as you happily like to call them. She means the extra toys and goodies that were included in the comic. But there is way more that annoys me about this comic. Why are you changing the dialogues from the anime? That is really unnecessary. Some of the illustrations also look kind of squished. You should change that. Oh, and in some of your comics, you wrote that the level Omega doesn't exist. But that's not entirely true, because if this level doesn't exist, then what in the Lucemon is Omegamon then? Okay, that's it for now. Tummy. Oh my god, she really went all in with the harshness. I'm sure you guys want to know what the editors replied. Or if they even replied at all? Well, they decided to actually print this negative feedback along with their response, which sounds kind of petty if you read between the lines. That was quite entertaining. So here's what they wrote. Hi, you are right. Some of the extras are reappearing. But that happens rarely and only after a long period of time, so people who started reading later still have the chance to get one of the older extras. Until now, nobody had complained about this, but instead was met with great response. You are the first one to complain. About the dialogues? Yes, you paid attention. Sometimes we change them, and that's because this is a comic and not the anime. A comic has to limit itself to only a few illustrations without animation, so we have to adjust the text as well. This means that sometimes we have to add some extra information, which we put in extra text boxes and not the speech bubbles. However, we don't change the content. Plus, a Digimon expert from Japan reviews and approves the comics as well. This also goes for the illustrations. Now, about the Omega level. We don't know where this is coming from. Omegamon came to life by Wargreymon and Metal Garurumon's 
Drug race evolution. In German they call that DNA digivolution. There's no Agu level just because Agumon exists, right? Burn! Ha! You better have burn heal! Whew, that was something. Let's move away from the haters and focus on the important questions of life. Like the one from Jonas. Why don't you add a King Sukumon card to the comic as an extra? Seriously, I would like to know the answer to that too. Apart from the comic and the amazing fan art and letters, they dedicated some of the pages to a bunch of different things, like IRL events, cosplay, video and tabletop games, the Digimon card game, art challenges, as well as the comics making of. This stuff has nostalgia written all over it, so let me show you some of them. Did you know that the Digimon comic and music maker was a thing? Me either, but here it is, and uh, I don't know about you, but I kinda need that in my life? Then we get some information on how the anime was dubbed in Germany, and also how the comic was made. These guys sure are my heroes. Oh, by the way, Digimon World mentioned! They dedicated two entire pages to the game right around the time it hit shelves in the stores. I love the cute art that was included in this, apart from the in-game screenshots. If only they told us before that the PAL version is bugged and can't be finished normally. But hey, let's talk about this specific thing in another video. Wink! They also talked about the Digimon Adventure tabletop game, which I personally never had. But maybe some of you had or even still have it? What I really liked were the cute art and coloring challenges, as well as contests they sometimes included, like when they give you an uncolored doodle of the Digimon Kaiser, which you can color and then send to them, or where they tried to teach you how to draw Vemon. Super cute. They even printed some of them in a later release of the comic. I mean, when did Midoriya Izuku turn into the Digimon Kaiser? What I really liked as well were the random pages where they just dropped some lore about characters and Digimon like they did with Ryo Akiyama or when they revealed all the possible armor evolutions of the main Digimon from Adventure 2. Now let's be honest, we were all scrapping for any information and lore that is canon that we could get our hands on back then. I mean, the internet wasn't really a thing for most people yet. So these part of the comics were the source of information for hardcore fans back when we didn't have all the websites online yet. At some point, they even started to draw short original comics featuring the Digi Destin from Adventure Season 1, which were only two pages long. The point of this was to add a fun little story to the extra toy that was included in that specific comic. I mean, who doesn't love whoopee cushions? Everyone loves them, and the editors clearly did too, as they dedicated a short comic to it. If you're super busy rescuing the digital and human world, you gotta be allowed to laugh about some farts every now and then, right? For some this might just be a small detail, but the fact that your childhood heroes have the exact same toy in their hands that you just received by getting this Digimon comic was a very special thing to me. And lastly, there were some actual Digimon browser games online for those who already had internet access back then. I didn't at the time, so I could never try these myself. Unfortunately, all of these websites don't exist anymore. However, I used a little tool called the Wayback Machine and tried to find some of these sites online, so here's what I found. And finally, we can't talk about Digimon without talking about the merch, right? Back then, it wasn't just about watching the show or reading the comics. It was about living the Digimon life. We had the action figures, the cards, the digivices and, of course, the endless quest to collect them all. Every single comic would feature a page which was kind of like a catalog. You could place orders by sending them in via slow mail or simply by calling. 
Imagine doing that nowadays, huh? Some of that merch actually looks amazing. I mean, look at these tumblers, the bedding, these plushies, and oh my god, it's Strong Agumon! I need this right now! Okay, okay, calm down. Anyone else remember begging your parents for that one Digivice that all your friends had? Or trading Digimon cards at recess like they were the most valuable currency in the world? So, that's my little trip down memory lane. I'm surprised that these comics are not even faded and still look this vivid and amazing after 20 plus years. The memories they hold are happy and nostalgic and I want to make sure they are never lost or forgotten. And now I want to hear from you. Did you have any of these comics when you were younger? Or maybe some other nostalgic treasures? Let me know in the comments below. And hey, if you enjoyed this little nostalgia dive, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, keep digivolving my friends.